All right, all right. Hi, guys. Uh, today, you know, I have a lot of uh, projects going on that I'm trying to finish, you know, just a lot of little stuff here and there. And But I thought I would revisit one um, that I had tried when I very first got that uh, Bamboo Lab uh, X1 Carbon. And so I'm not a big, you know, I don't do a lot of figurines and I don't do a lot of busts and all that stuff, but I thought I would do, I always thought that uh, uh, the Terminator, the T-800 one, I thought that always looked pretty cool. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to have to do it because I'm a big Terminator fan. But, uh, but when I did it and I looked at the top, I could see the, the rings from the layering, right? The rings on the top of the skull. And, and I got onto a, uh, uh, a forum, I believe it was on Facebook and, and I popped that question, you know, like, what is it, you know, how do I get rid of this stuff? You know, I thought I'd ask, you know, it would be trial and error if I did it, you know, anyway, but it came up with a bunch of, bunch of feedback, a bunch of answers. And one of them. It was, I used two of the suggestions and the, the settings on uh, Bamboo Studio, it was under, uh, under quality and there was uh, to use adaptive layering and down at the bottom near advanced, it was uh, turning off the, uh, the option for only one wall on top surfaces and I turn that off and when I came back and printed it it came out really really nice you know you can really see uh, the difference I mean there there is still a little ringing that you see but not near what it was right um, now the why I want to revisit it is because on Bamboo Studio on the on the latest release, well that adaptive layering option is gone, right? I was looking at it going, well what the hell, I, you know? Um, so I went through. He's like, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna print off another one, and and see what it does just on on the normal print, and then just using. Um, just turning off that only one wall on the top, right? So I turned that off and I just wanted to see what it was going to do. So there's the previous one where this is using adaptive layering and, and, and no uh, turning off the single layer on the top. And you can see where it really made a difference. This was the original print right here. Um, now this one this was the normal print um, at 0.2 millimeter layer thickness, and you can see you can see the rings there. If uh, if you can see it from the different angles, and this one, oh, this one was the 0.2 millimeter layer uh, with. Um, that single layer, you know, uh, what is it? Only one wall on top surfaces that was turned off at 0.2 millimeters and it still came out, you know, heavily ringed, right? Um, this one I did, it's of course without the adaptive layering, but I just reduced the, uh, the layer thickness to 0.12. And, and it did okay. You can see it reduced it a lot, but, uh, but it added time to the print, right? Uh, and I guess for, for reference, this first one uh, with, at 0.2 millimeters, uh, the time was 19 minutes, 19.18. Uh, and then when I switched over, 
and did the 0.12, it upped it to 38.6. So almost, uh, or just doubling, doubling the, the print time, you know, for 19.8 to uh, 38.6. So, so you can, you can tell, I mean, if I was doing the whole, you know, bust like that, uh, it's doubling the time. It's a significant, uh, feature there, but, but it did reduce it. Um, so basically that only one wall on top surface, uh, really, uh, didn't do anything <laughs> for that. Uh, so I decided, you know what, I have other printers here. I think I'm going to try them out. Uh, I have a some prints on an Ender 3 and some on an AnyCubic. Um, now both of these samples here, um, well let's see, these were done on PLA, the ones I did on the X1 Carbon. These were just uh, just a generic PLA setting. On the Ender 3, this is uh, PLA carbon fiber. And on the AnyCubic was just another uh, PLA. And when I took a look at it, and I call this like a standard, you know, just setting it up with a 0.2 millimeter layer and uh, nothing special about it, right? And, and you can see the rings on it. This next one, it's at 0.2 millimeter, but it did use, I did do an uh, uh, adaptive layer. So when you take a look, now I used Ultimaker Cura. I used this on uh, on both the Ender 3s and the AnyCubic. And if you see down here under Experimental, well, there is a Use Adaptive Layers. And uh, let's see, and if you scroll down, so there are some um, choices here that I haven't tried. I just use the generic use adaptive layers, uh, but they have maximum variations, adaptive layers, variations, step size, blah, blah, blah. So I haven't tried those yet, but so you can see I did try that on this sample and You know, it's questionable. It's it's different. I don't think it's any better, except for out here on the outer edges. But when you start getting up to the peak again, it's just, eh, you know, it's just, you can still see the rings. Now this next one, this is the same token where I, I uh, reduced the layer to 0.12 and did use the adaptive layer and and it looks like as far as rings go it looks like it was doing the trick but you can see these little artifacts and stuff now i'm gonna have to retry this because with the uh, pla carbon fiber now this was an older roll i was almost finished with it i use this a lot i really really like this stuff but but i think it needed to be dried out but i went ahead and printed this off and because I've seen on, on other on other prints where it was starting to leave artifacts, so I'd go in and dry it out, use it again, and they were gone, right? So I think when some moisture sets in, the, the carbon fiber kind of spits out of there, you know what I mean? <laughs> and I guess it really showed up with the 0 0.12 layers. But uh, now on this sample set, this is done on an AnyCubic, and you can see it's uh, it's regular PLA, real real glossy finish. But this is the standard one where it's 0.2 millimeter, um, nothing special. Uh, this one was at 0.2 millimeter with adaptive layer, and you can see where it was starting to bubble up here too. Um, kind of similar to this, it it did well. Both of these, they did well on the outer 
of the circumference but then up here at the top it still kind of messes up and the third one here the same token I took uh, uh, knocked it to 0.12 layer thickness with uh, with the adaptive layer and uh, and it's still iffy right so I really don't know no this is with no adaptive layer that's right um, but it's at 0.12 and you know it gets rid of some of the the rings on there but the quality is still not there uh, the quality came out really nice on the X1 Carbon. But it makes me wonder. Um, let's see, what is this? Yeah, so this is version 1.4.0.18. 1 uh, on the previous release, that selection was here. Um, yeah, layer height. Well, what happened to your options here? You know, I thought there would be, a, you know, the adaptive layer here and the only one wall on top surfaces. But this, I didn't think this made that big of a difference. Um, as far as getting rid of those rings. But the layer height going to a one to, to a point one two that did help. But I think the biggest help was with the adaptive layer, especially on the X1 Carbon anyway. Yeah, so it looks like there's a couple of options if you're trying to get rid of those rings uh, on a curved surface like that on the top. And, and I guess if we backtrack and go to that previous release of uh, Bamboo Studio and see if that uh, adaptive layering is still an option on that. I'd like to try that again and see. That seemed to work the best, right? Uh, the other option is to go down to to a, a to a point one two. I think point one was too much. Uh, point one two seemed to give it, you know, decreasing the layers. They're still there, but it did decrease them, right? On these other prints, on these other, it was a hit or a miss. I guess it matters on what. Uh, filament you're using you're going to have to get whatever your favorite filament is and and try it out um, on the experimental if you're going to use cura on the experimental part you know experiment with uh, uh, with the adaptive layer and see if your filament likes it you know see if your printer and the filament combination likes it uh, on this one that had the carbon fiber, the, the PLA carbon fiber. Yeah, I'm going to retry that again because on, on other pieces, and you can see this, this was the same stuff. This is made out of the carbon fiber. This is a different piece uh, that was done way before, right? Uh, but look at that, that finish on it is just fantastic. Even the seam, this is supposed to be a seam right here, and you can hardly tell it's there. But, uh, but that PLA carbon fiber, just really, really, I really, really like it. <laughs> and I'm probably going to go back and print off another uh, sample from the top of the, that skull and and see if it still pops up yeah i guess the conclusion is i mean i, I wish that uh adaptive layer would show back up on it on on the bamboo lab uh studio i haven't contacted them yet uh but i i thought i'd experiment first before i go ask them I, i'd hate to roll back uh a release of bamboo studio um I don't know what I would be losing if I go back, uh, and I don't know what uh, the advantage is to stay where it is, right? So I need to do a little more research. But that's why I thought I'd revisit this, because it seemed like a, a, a good solution for that is non-existent now on the Bamboo Studio. But otherwise, the prints came out fantastic on these. Um, 
Now on the Ender 3 and the, the Anycubic, it looks like it's a hit or a miss as far as what, uh, what filament you're going to use. Uh, I would try a small sample like I did. You can see all I did was just position the, the skull on the top and just cut off the top of the head you know, on the slicer so that I'm not going to print this whole thing just to see what happens on the top. Uh, so it's a pretty quick experiment. Uh, it takes about, oh, what was it, uh, 20 or 30 minutes on the X1 Carbon, maybe less, 15 or 20, uh, and up to uh, 50 minutes to an hour on the Anycubic and Ender 3s, right? But that's about it. So let me know. Let me know uh, what you come up with and what your experience is with uh, getting rid of these rings on the top of the skull. And if you have a great solution, let me know. And let me know if you're going to do your own testing. What are your results? Uh, I welcome all comments. So I guess that is it for this video. So as always, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and watch for my next video.